23-year-old Linda Taylor had moved to Reno from Minnesota. She worked at Gold Dust Bar as a bartender and lived in the Wixom Drive apartment complex. According to her family, she didn't really like Reno, but had written a letter to her sister saying she was thinking of attending a manicure school. Her parents became worried when they didn't hear from her, and she had also missed a recent car payment, something she had never done before. They considered this out of character for her because she was very organized and always had things perfectly planned out. Twelve days after she was reported missing, an abandoned car was found March 18th in the Rayleigh's parking lot. The car belonged to Linda Taylor. This only confirmed suspicions from her parents that something had happened to her. Friends also remembered her being agitated the days prior to her disappearance. She had had an argument with someone at her work and said she wasn't planning to return there. She had also met a man at the local First National Bank. According to employees there, Linda and a bearded locksmith were both getting documents notarized and struck up a friendly conversation. Another employee at a store remembered Linda buying shoes and mentioning this bearded man. She was apparently planning on meeting him for a lunch date. So who was this mysterious man? While his name was never released, police were able to track him down. The man at first denied knowing who Linda was, but eventually admitted to meeting her at the bank and then going out for lunch. And interestingly enough, when they found him, he had shaved his beard, quit his job, and moved out of town. Detectives began questioning two other women that the man had allegedly dated. Not only did they refuse to answer any questions, but they also skipped town. Could this man have been responsible for Linda's disappearance? Linda's parents hired notorious Gary Caradori to be a private detective on the case. He had a reputation for finding missing children when police couldn't. At first, he said that he was 50% sure that Linda was still alive and may have left on her own volition. He later tracked down the bearded man who was now living in Missoula, Montana. He said that the man was at first surprised to see him, but agreed to answer questions. While there was never enough evidence against him, both police and Gary Caradori believed the bearded locksmith was hiding something. In 1979, Sherry Harbiki lived in Sun Valley and worked at the MGM Grand Hotel. One night, she received an obscene phone call, and around 2.30 a.m., she called police after then seeing a prowler near her home. She was so scared that she went to stay at her brother's home for the night. The next afternoon, she left her brother's and went back home to change. About an hour later, a family claimed to have seen a woman matching Sherry's description walking down the side of the road. Her parents called police when they became worried after not hearing from her since April 8th. Police later found her car not too far from her Sun Valley residence, but there was no sign of forced entry or foul play. Two motorcyclists called police when they found a badly decomposed body. The body, which was laying on its back, was hidden under a mattress. Police found identification showing that the body was Sherry Harbiki. She had been shot in the back of her head and back. Was it possible that Linda Taylor's disappearance and Sherry Harbiki's murder were somehow related? While it may seem like a stretch, there are some similarities between the two cases. Both Sherry and Linda only went missing a month apart from one another. Both women were around the same age. Both women left abandoned vehicles. Both women worked at casinos. And both women lived within a couple miles of one another. It's been over 30 years since the murder of Sherry Harbiki and the disappearance of Linda Taylor, and unfortunately, no updates on either case have been released. 